Today, Headless UI finally released at 1.0. What we're going to do is talk about Headless UI a little bit, what a renderless component is, and what it might be useful for. To understand what Headless UI is and why it exists, we first need to look at another library from the same author, Tailwind CSS. So let's take a look at that one right now. If you haven't heard of Tailwind, it's getting very popular lately. Basically, it's a bunch of CSS utilities. For example, you can see here, they created this really cool card component, and what they did was write no styling, they just used classes for everything. At first, this looks very complicated and difficult to understand and read, but I've started using it a bit, and it's pretty nice to work with. You're able to make pretty nice things with very little code. Anyway, this is the original product, Tailwind CSS, and it enabled you to make really nice UIs. This is only a CSS library, it's not going to give you any components, however. Before, uh, before we get into the component part, let's take a look at one other product from Tailwind Labs, and that is Tailwind UI. This is basically a collection of components built with Tailwind CSS. Uh, this is a commercial one, you can buy it, but it is pretty nice. Uh, it has heaps of different components. One of the problems with this when it first came out, or I suppose not one of the problems, but one of the, the things you need to consider, is it was HTML and vanilla JavaScript only, so it was very difficult to integrate with your Vue and React applications. You had to write your own JavaScript code to integrate everything together. And this is where Headless UI comes into it. Headless UI is a number of styled com or unstyled components for React and Vue, so you get completely unstyled components. <laughs> Why would you want unstyled components? Well, the point of this is so you can then integrate it more easily with things like Tailwind CSS. And what this has done is enabled Tailwind UI to release both Vue and React integration. What we're going to do now is take a look at those and see how you can use them to create your own components very easily. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at this diagram to understand this better. The bottom level is going to be your, your headless UI. So you're going to have these components, but they're not going to have any styling. It's just going to be logic. For example, when the component should display and how things should be handled. On top of that, we're going to have Tailwind CSS. It's going to be all those classes to make everything look nice. And finally, you can have the commercial product if you're interested, Tailwind UI, which is just a, a big collection of styled components using ta Tailwind CSS. So what I did was set up a little basic project just to show you how this all works. So over here on the left, you can see we have a completely unstyled component. This is a headless component. And it is a menu. <laughs> it's not a very good looking menu. And as promised, there is no styles. Let's take a look at the code and see how this works and see how everything is going to work together. So you can see over here on the right, I have my component. What I've done is import menu and transition from headless UI React, that is the React integration. And if we scroll down here, we have our component and it's pretty standard so far. We just have our elements as you would expect. And here's kind of a trick with renderless components. We're going to have this function here and it's going to give us access to any of the internal values from the, from the menu component, in this case, whether it is open or not. We then head down here and use the menu button component. Again, these are all provided by the headless UI library. And if you are going to use the menu, you need to make sure you compose it together using menu buttons and menu items. Finally, we have another renderless function down here. We're grabbing out the active prop and we can use this to conditionally style or display something. You can see I'm not using it at all. Everything is just displayed here and it's not very clear which of these is selected. So let's go ahead and take a look now at the styled version. Just going to head over to my spec file and uncomment this one so you can see it. If we save that one off, everything is now going to run. And you can see this is my styled component. It looks a whole lot better and looks very professional. And this was written with very little code. Let me show you the code right now. So you can see here, this is basically exactly the same as we had in the previous menu drop down headless. It's just this one has some styling. If we scroll down a little bit, all I've done is add class names. I've had quite a lot of class names, but relative to how good it looks, this is really not that much code. Finally, I added this transition component. It's going to give me some nice styling. And I was able to use that open prop, which I grabbed from the renderless function. And that's going to give me this really nice transition as the, the modal appears and fades away. If we scroll down a little bit more, I'm using the active prop as well. And if it is active, I'm going to conditionally apply this BG blue 100 class. And that's how I'm able to have this nice hover effect. And that's how renderless components work. Let's actually take a look at this and see how you're able to integrate this into your own uh, applications if you'd like to write your own renderless component. So if we head back over to GitHub, we can actually see the source code. I'm inside of the headless UI package inside of menu TSX. And you can see this component is very, very large. These renderless components, which are just going to be logic, are fairly complicated, especially if you're using TypeScript, you're going to have these very large complex type definitions. Anyway, if we scroll down a long way, uh, you need to know React very well to be able to read this, but luckily you're going to be integrating. You don't really need to know how the code works. 
we can see the magic down the bottom here. Instead of returning a JSX element like you normally would, we're returning this render function. This render function is actually some kind of utility they've written. It doesn't really matter how much or how it works, but the point is they're passing in this object of options, and that's going to be accessible to us in our component. If we head back to our source code, this function here, the render function, is going to be what we receive here. We're going to then uh, grab it, extract out all of the props that we need, for example, active, and then we return our component. So this element is then going to be returned by render, and it's kind of going to be returned as the render function for this component. So that's why this pattern is often known as render as a function. You can actually pass in your own render function from a different component. So you're able to easily reuse your logic. This does work exactly the same in view, and that's what we're going to be seeing in just a moment. But this is the main premise of renderless components and the kind of goal of headless UI. Obviously in this particular use case, headless UI is built for the, the Tailwind CSS libraries, but you could easily use it to build your own as well if you would like. And this is a pretty nice abstraction. For example, if you look at any of the really popular libraries like Material UI or Vuetify or any of them, they've basically all gone ahead and re-implemented something very similar to what you see over here in the GitHub source code. They have different implementations, but they're all doing very similar things. And by using something like Headless UI, you're going to be able to have a kind of solid base to build on top of for your React and Vue component systems. Anyway, now that we've seen the React integration, I think it's worth seeing the Vue integration as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and start that one up now. Just while we wait for that one to start, I'm going to show you the code just to save a little bit of time. You can see over here, I have my Vue component. And again, it's going to be very similar. We're using the components exposed by the headless UI uh, library. In this case, we have list box and list button. If I scroll down a little bit more, we have list options and list option. And that's how we're going to build our nice little list. Finally, if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see these are coming from Headless UI's view integration, and that's pretty much all we need to do. The trick here to get the props from internal values is going to be this V slot, and this is exactly the same idea as what we saw before. It's going to give us an object which we can destructure, and we're going to, going to grab the active and selected values, and this is literally the exact same pattern you see inside of React over here. So it is kind of interesting to see how two libraries accomplish uh, basically the same thing. I'll just go ahead and show you what I built. I think it looks pretty good. Just give it a moment to start up, and there we go. So I built this really cool list component here. It looks really good, and I hardly had to write any code. All I had to do was import a few of those elements, and then go ahead and add my own classes like this. I actually didn't even have to write half of this, right? What I actually did was head over to their website, which I'm going to show you right now so you can do it too. They have React and View, and all you need to do is choose the element you like, for example, Menu. Go ahead and head over to Code, and you can just copy all of this. And then all you need to do is go ahead and change the classes. So you can very easily build your own UI library with little to no effort. You don't need to write any JavaScript or any CSS. You just have to write some basic classes. I think that is pretty nice. Anyway, if we head back to our application, you can see I built this. It is pretty good. And again, I'm using those destructed props, the selected and active prop uh, over here. And I'm able to use those to conditionally apply some styling. In this case, I'm going to have this blue background. And you can see that's when I mouse over these. It's going to go ahead and update everything correctly. I'll just quickly show you the spec as well while we're here. If I head over to the spec file, uh, it's very basic. It's just a very basic Cypress test. All I'm doing is creating a new function up here. I'm using a render function here. You could use templates. It uh, doesn't really matter too much. And then I just go ahead and render it out with mount. And finally, I have this little integration. I'm just going to loop over my items and select each one. And I think this is pretty cool. It gives you a nice little showcase of exactly how the component is going to work. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with uh, how everything turned out. I'm really excited to go ahead and build my own little library using a Tailwind and Headless UI and see what I can come up with. Uh, if we just head back to the website again, you can see there's tons of code samples and uh, tons of different information on how you can build your own things. So I would definitely encourage you to go ahead and give it a try as well. Anyway, I'll see how this plays out, but I do expect these headless components to become very popular in the future. It's giving us a nice kind of base to build on top of, so we don't have to go ahead and continuously re-implement these things over and over again. Anyway, that's all for now, so I'll see you in the next video.